All right. Well, welcome to the Robo Show. I'm your host, Chad Robo Show, and I've got a really great guest on today, uh, Travis Nardi. Uh, Travis is a brother of Recon Marine and uh, wrote a really cool book uh, called All It Takes. If you guys are familiar with the Recon community, we have a really cool saying that uh, all it takes is all you got. It's kind of a simple statement, but, uh, but a super powerful statement, and I think it's not, nothing more fitting than a young guy uh, that wants to – become a recon Marine and ask the question, you know, how do I become a recon Marine or what do I have to do? And you know, all it takes, that's all you got. And uh, good to have you on Travis. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, thanks for the invite. Uh, that's really what the, the book is for is for um, those willing to maybe add a little purpose to their life, uh, choose that difficult job of becoming a recon Marine. And uh, at least when I was joining, I did a bunch of research, um, trying to find all the things I needed to do, um, swimming, training, everything I possibly could. And I didn't really find much. I mean, there's all, there was definitely stuff on the internet back then, but, um, that's what this book's really for is for the, uh, those lap mover Marines trying to go recon, attend the basic reconnaissance course, those in high school, maybe college that are looking to, um, make recon the job of choice uh, for them. And this book really gives a lot of, uh, of that insight to the actual basic reconnaissance course and what it takes to graduate. Yeah. Well, I want to I tell everybody why, you know, you're qualified to, you know, write this book, to author this book and, um, and why people should buy it because, uh, because of your inside knowledge. And also why we have you on the show, you uh, not only a staff sergeant in the Marines, but uh, you uh, you didn't start off as a recon Marine. You were a crew chief on a CH-46. It was. Which is, yeah. uh, is kind of cool. And uh, you've probably seen some recon Marines jumping out of your helicopter and like, I want to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> but, it, but then you attended at BRC, Basic Reconnaissance Course, in 2013 and served as a recon Marine at First Recon Battalion, uh, 2013 to 2017, and then uh, became a BRC instructor. And, uh, and so you're not just given this from the only experience of going through BRC, but, uh, but as an instructor and seeing so many uh, young aspiring recon Marines come to the course and fail <laughs> the course or quit or, or for whatever reason. And um, man, I, I got to tell you, uh, my experience, you know, I, I went to BRC in February of 1995, uh, is a lot different than it is now. And that didn't mean better for worse. I'm not saying like, I, you know, like I'm the old school guy and it was, it was so hard when I went through, it was just so much different. Like I spent two months in rip with a bunch of gatekeepers, you know, trying to keep me out. Like you'll never be in my community, zip tying us to flagpoles and putting sprinklers on us <laughs> and all kind of just terrible stuff. And, and uh, just trying to keep us from the community. Then you get to BRC and uh, I, w I went to BRC and I was running a, I was running a, a 1633 mile. I was like super, super small and like real quick guy. And uh, it broke me. It, it, it broke. I, I graduated running like 20, like 21, 21, 30, like uh, three miles. So my, my runtime went down. I, my body was broken. I could barely even walk. I, my IT bands hurt so bad. I remember like we get done after the, you know, go up to the barracks. And I could barely even make up the stairs. And I'm like trying to just pull myself through this course. And this course broke me. And then just recently, I was over at, uh, and I'd say just recently, like probably last you know, a couple of years ago, I was over, I, I did a, I get to go, I go visit the school whenever I can, but uh, I was a guest speaker there and I got, you know, guest speaker, I got to um, shake all the guys' hands and hand them their certificate when they graduated. And as I shook all these guys' hands, I, I remember like feeling like these guys had like meaty palms. They were still like dried hands from the, from the infant phase, but they're like meaty palms. They felt like in shape and they went, these guys weren't broken guys. There were guys that were built up and uh and i even noticed that when i just went to first recon battalion you know i'm, I'm sitting there talking to all the guys at first recon battalion and it's like I feel like you're talking to look you're looking at the guys and look like a professional sports team there's a big difference between the old school way of just breaking guys and being gatekeepers to building just incredible recon marines and uh, and i gotta tell you as an instructor like you guys have done a great job i mean of course has like physical therapists and running coaches and swimming coaches and uh, everything and so before we get into the book and, and, and how to be a recon Marine, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Like the contrast of the, the evolution of being a, a, 
a community that just wants to gatekeep everyone out to building just real good recon marines. Absolutely. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. When I, when I went through BRC, um, every, everyone that goes through, it was always harder when I went. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, that's when, when I went, uh, it was exactly how hard I thought it would be and 10 times harder than that. Um, just waking up each morning and staying motivated, um, going through getting broken. I think, uh, I grew up surfing, um, most of my life uh, in Hawaii and I was very comfortable in the water before I arrived. I was not as comfortable in the water when I left uh, just because, uh, Hey, give them another brick and uh, you know, go down bottom sample, bottom sample. It was a little bit of the gatekeeper thing for me just because I went through as an NCO. And at the time the NCOs were like, we expect more out of you. So we're going to give you more. Um, yeah. I remember going to bed at night, uh, watching motivational films on YouTube. Uh, I wrote down why I wanted to be there. This is the job I've, you know, waited my whole life for. Um, and just rereading that each morning, each night before bed, just to stay motivated to keep going through. Um, it, it is hard. It does take everything you have. And uh, I definitely saw that as a student. And I remember that going through as an instructor. And the course really has improved. Um, a ton from when I was a student to when I was instructor. And even from the short time, I haven't been an instructor. I left in at the end of 2019 and the last two years, it's already increased um, exponentially in the uh, product that it puts out. The new recon Marines that graduate, um, they're stronger, they're faster, they're more able, more capable. Um, we've added the shooting um, portion to the course. So they're, they're not only stronger, faster, uh, better in the water on land um, physically but smarter. They're, also, they're smarter too right they're yeah. smarter yeah they're, uh, they're they're learning a lot of uh, you know scientific stuff um, they're advancing through getting ready for dive school uh, upon graduating the course and and they're shooting now so they're getting that good foundation of uh, marksmanship beyond the infantry training battalion after boot camp and then that goes right into your workups um for deployment uh so it's great because that, now there's a there's a the legitimate pipeline right they they oh yeah they don't start off at brc they start off at a at a martin marines waiting recon training or is it called different now yeah uh it's it's still martin marines waiting recon training and now it's the rtap um uh recon training assessment program um it was uh your basic recon preparation course yep. when I was an instructor there. Um, so the names keep changing and I do mention that in the book, um, but it's it's all just development. Um, Marines waiting recon training is more of a, if classes are really full, it's like you're literally waiting to train. Um, they still get some good PT in and uh, they're definitely not getting weaker um, during that time, but it is a kind of a holding platoon getting ready for the uh, pre-BRC RTAP course and then BRC when they finally attend that. Um, a lot of guys in MART will be practicing. They might be between the prep course and BRC and they're just working on swimming, finning. So you're staying busy. Uh, physical fitness yeah. doesn't end. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's definitely like a, a pre, MART is like a pre and in between holding phase um, between the courses. And then they graduate BRC, they go uh, pre-dive, combat dive, jump, free fall, sear. Oh, yeah. They're they're uh, pipelining them through it, everything. Uh, so they'll split it between the classes. Sometimes there's not a di uh, dive school seats or airborne school seats, free fall school seats. And airborne is a prerequisite for free fall. So some of the class will attend dive first. Some of the class, all the graduates, some of those classes will go to airborne. And then uh, upon graduating all those, they'll get their orders to first, second, or third recon battalions. Um, Which so is great because they're, sh they're showing up ready. with all the insertion skills and, the, and they're qualified recon Marines and they're ready to do a workup and deploy. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, yeah, there's, there's nothing worse, at least when I checked into um, first recon battalion after graduating BRC, I went straight to airborne first, I think. So it was still pretty fast. But 
it wasn't another year and a half before I went to dive. So all those dive training, amphibious phase stuff that the rest of my platoon was doing, I couldn't do. I had to wait on, or I was a safety yeah. swimmer or something like that. But now it's every, everyone's getting the training, um, getting ready for that deployment and you get all your best guys on the dive team, you get all your best guys on a free fall team and then uh, start getting really ready to go to point and do work. So this episode of the robo show is brought to you by iron dash neck dot com our neck is uh the world's number one neck strengthening device you guys don't know in uh 2006 i was in afghanistan and uh broke my neck and uh if you want to read about how, that story a crazy story of how i broke my neck uh, it's in my book and for advantage you can go and check it out but coming back from afghanistan uh after that's when i had all my big mma fights and if my neck and the VA wanted to do fusion and I refused to do fusion and I just opted to just strengthen my neck, keep my neck strong. Uh, so since man, all these years fighting through all my fights and MMA and Jiu Jitsu, I've always been very important that I keep the muscles of my neck strong because the bro the bones in my neck are broken off. And so I don't have that stability. And so neck strengthening has always been a very important thing to me. I've always just improvised ways to do it using body weight, using different kind of improvised things that I'd make up. But now uh, I don't have to do that anymore because I have an, an iron neck uh, device, which helps me to uh, not only strengthen my neck, but, uh, but do it in a safe way. The, the way the device works is that, you know, it's, it, it's on a rotator. So it, as you move your neck, the, ro the point of uh, where the tension is actually moves uh, around your head. And so super uh, effective and safe way to strengthen your neck. And whether you have a neck injury or not, I think in, uh, in sports or just in, in, in life, it's really important to have a good, strong uh, neck. If your neck's strong, your hips are strong, your body's going to be strong. And so check it out, iron-neck.com. If you enter promo code ROBYSHOW, uh, R-O-B-I-C-H-A-U-X, my last name, you'll get 10% off. And uh, I'm really doing this because I, I love it myself, and I want everybody out there, especially those with bad necks, to be able to take care of themselves. And so I really thought it was a great product to push out and partner with. And uh, these guys are pretty awesome. They're a Texas-based company, iron-neck.com. Yeah, great. I, I'm not – as an old-school recon Marine, I'm not mad. I'm, like, super <laughs> yeah. proud. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not like, man, why did, I get, why did I get that? We didn't get that. I'm, like, just super, super proud of where the community is right now. Yeah, I think it's great. That there's, there's probably a level of jealousy, at, you know, with older guys possibly <laughs> in, the, in the platoons, but – it's just, it's only better. Um, that's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with uh, getting fully qualified guys um, there and ready just, to deploy. I really have wanted to go to free fall school. Like I remember like that was like what I seen as a recon Marine with guys jumping out of planes at 36,000 feet. And, and uh, I, it took me, you know, almost, almost five years, like four, between four or five years to go to free fall school. And, but then I went to the army at a uh, free fall school and now the Marine Corps for those who, you know, for everybody listening, Marine Corps has their own. And, uh, you know, not trying to be compare in competition, but I am, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've, I'm told it's, it's a Marine Corps probably has the best football program out there. It's great. Uh, I, it took me two or three years before I went to free fall. Um, I was on a dive team, so I didn't need to free fall on deployment or anything. Um, so I was on a dive team and I stuck with diving, did a lot of that underwater stuff. And, uh, but free fall school was fantastic. I think my instructor that flew with me in the sky, he had over 10,000 jumps or something. It was yeah. insane. Just the highest quality level free fallers teaching um, that some of the best training for sure. I, and I don't, I haven't been to any other free fall courses, but I can't imagine they're much better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, just to come out of a pipeline, I, I, I was down when I was down speaking at first recon battalion, like a couple months ago, they, uh, one of the uh, team leaders, team leader showed me a video of this. He just, he was, cause he was blown away. Cause he's like from my, gener you know, close to my generation. He was like, just blown away. This, in this video of this Lance Corporal, like 19 years old, jumping a 500 pound bundle at like 30,000 feet. And it's like, man, like a 19 year old kid jumping a 500 pound barrel, you know? Uh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's insane. It's, so if you're young, young guy out there wanting to do something cool and get right into it, you know, you know, the Marine Corps, uh, and, I definitely encourage people. You may have a different opinion and I, I want to know your opinion on it. I encourage uh, people to do the BRC contract. 
Um, I know your your ELAP move, so it's a different story for you. But uh, in the past, I would have recommended people to lap move. That way they got older, more mature. They knew they were what they were doing. But now they just, there's so much information out there in the ability for a young kid to be able to prepare before his body's broken and banged up. Like, you know, that's why I love this book. You, you wrote this book uh, that a kid could just grab a book like this and make the right decisions to show up prepared. And there's no reason, if you show up to this school prepared, there's no reason you shouldn't graduate unless you just don't really want to do it. And, uh, you know, when I say you show up, that means you, you got there because you qualified to be there. And now you're there qualified. The only reason you wouldn't pass is because of yourself, um, especially with all this information. So I, I recommend, I'm recommending the kids get the recon contract. What do you, what's your opinion there? You, you, could, you could disagree with me, by the way. <laughs> no, I absolutely, absolutely get the recon contract. Um, the, the younger you are, the better it is. Um, you're that, not always. I, that, some Marines, they get a lot faster, stronger as they, you know, those first few years in because they're running PFTs constantly and stuff. But with all the information out there, and it, let's say you're, you know, a sophomore, junior in high school, you could, you know, join track, cross country, swim, go to the YMCA, you have all this free time to, you know, have a job or kids or things like that. Uh, you have books like this, you can read, give you all the knowledge and everything you need to, um, to succeed. And uh, you never guarantee a contract later. Um, lat moving is still difficult. Um, so if it's what you want to do and you know that, then absolutely try to get that contract um, as soon as you can. Um, but if you don't, I wouldn't say it's over. But just like with me, you know, no. you keep keep trying, uh, get there eventually. Um, but yeah, that that contract's important. Uh, definitely work to get that. If, if you know what that's what you want to do, absolutely go do it. Um, as soon as possible. So we're, we're, before we get into, again, we could get into the book, but we're talking about the decision-making process and somebody making a decision to, to go to BRC, to pursue being a reconnaissance Marine. Why recon over MARSOC? I have my own opinions, but. Um, well, recon, at least for a younger guy, you can get a contract initially straight out straight bef like before boot camp um so that would be the easier option if you're just now joining not right. not easier as in like you're going to graduate the school <laughs> easier but easier as in uh, a more direct route um with right you can you can get a you can get an enlistment contract as recon marine you cannot as marsoc marsoc's like the reenlistment type deal exactly marsoc was is any mos you're gonna have to do that for probably two to three plus years and then uh, attempt MARSOC. But if you're, if you want that community and that that lifestyle and that job, and you're just now joining recon contract, absolutely um, go straight into it. If you can't, then you can lab move like myself or maybe move on to MARSOC later. But um, I'd say that's the benefit with getting a recon contract, especially younger guys that aren't currently in the Marine Corps. Um, but as far as community goes, I think even guys that were recon that went MARSOC, uh, most of them, or at least a good majority that I've talked to, say the community and like the work is uh, better in recon. Um, they yeah. enjoy their time the brotherhood. better, brotherhood stronger, um, maybe less political, possibly. Uh, just just that there's a, it's a better, uh, unit cohesion and, um, uh, to community that we're a very yeah. strong community that I'm not sure Marsoc is there. They probably have a strong community, but I don't think it's as strong as the recon community. It's bigger, uh, which is, you know, smaller is always more intimate mm -hmm. for me. It's the mission like, uh, you know, Marsoc and recon are not, you know, apples to apples. It's two different missions. So I think yeah. you know, really understand what you do. I, I loved, I've always loved the reconnaissance mission, um, you know, especially even being as a young guy, I picked up on it right away. Like I'm going to gather battlefield intelligence for the unit commanders to be able to make decisions and, you know, how to keep people alive. And just that support element of uh, the overall Marine Corps mission, being that support element and going out and, and providing that, being eyes and ears on the battlefield for the unit commanders is uh, just something I always just, I, I just dug the mission and thought it was cool. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, man, doing like a, 
come off a of LCU and launch a Zodiac and swimming in and doing a confirmed to our beach report and that, that kind of mission. It's just, just cool to me. I, I just liked it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's definitely supporting the Marine Corps. Um, the mission is different. Personally, the foreign intent, uh, foreign internal defense that MARSOC does um, is, I, I, it may be mean or uh, yeah. not true, but it seems like you're just a, you know, a combat instructor teaching, you know, foreign, foreign people how to fight and it's not the best trained people. Um, you're making them better and working with, it's, it's a great mission for the United States, but it's not, you're not supporting the Marine Corps directly at MARSOC yeah. where recon it's direct support of, um, the Marine Corps. And if you love the Marine Corps, you want to support Marines, then that's, you know, recon yeah. is the way to go. Yes. I love that, man. I love the, I love the job. Uh, so the book, what, what's, uh, let's break down the book. Uh, for, first of all, to get into the book, what it, I, I've been told that from beginning to end from somebody that it's still, it was, and still probably like 75 to 80% of the people that begin the process from the very beginning to the end become recon Marines. Is that accurate or? Yeah, it's probably, it's probably still accurate. I think uh, with modern BRC course and that that new RTAP, um, technically people that fail out of RTAP didn't fail BRC. So they're just messing with numbers to make it appear right, like right. we're graduating. But yeah, it's probably about 80% um, unsuccessful rate. Uh, that yeah, that's what I mean. From the very beginning, people leaving the four weeks of SOI, like those yes. guys to be in a recon marine. Yeah, I've heard uh, I've heard those numbers kind of skewed. Like, oh, it can only like, wait. I mean, if you make it to BRC, I mean, technically, if you make it into the BRC class, you yeah. should graduate. Yes, right. Not everybody yeah. does, but <laughs> but you it's should. Still, you it's still, yeah, it's still a possibility of failing. Um, a strong possibility of failing. It's you're not just because you made it to BRC doesn't mean you're going to graduate. But it that if you make it to BRC, it is better than it used to be. But there's also yeah two four months of additional training before you make it to brc that wasn't there before and that's where right. a lot of people are going to drop out yeah I and mean, that's where I mean, even in old school i mean we had rip and that's rip was a just a giant weeding out process you had the end doc, the end doc which now is assessment selection and the end doc would be like you know you have like 50 marines there that are all like studs coming from representing the marine corps and, you know they pick two <laughs> and oh, then yeah. they build up a, a rip class of that and then, and then they just trashed a rip class and break everybody and then you have a few guys that make it the unit eventually go to brc so yes yeah, same process different names yes uh, but then but then you know at brc while you're there just so many support mechanisms do you talk about that in the book to support like the the all the people there the that are there like the resources oh like um like medical, like, tra physical trainer yeah. stuff. Like I, uh, I don't really mention a lot of that in in the book. Um, it's more, more focused on the individual and what they can do and what is expected of them. Um, so we'll just and let's just touch on that real quick. Who, who's there and and why are they there? Uh, physical trainers are there um, to maintain health. Uh, it's you know stress fractures is a, a big thing there. Rucking with a lot of weight. Um, there's uh, so there's a large medical support with uh, Navy corpsmen's, uh, special amphibious reconnaissance corpsmen are there. Um, that's that's the most helpful organization. There's civilians, professional athletic training civilians that are there as well. And I'd say the most important part of that course is staying healthy the best you can. And that's probably, in my opinion, the biggest support. Um, aided to the students while they're there is the recovery and injury prevention that's provided um, for those that seek it out um, at the school. Yeah. So, so if you're, if you're listening and, and help you, if you're listening and you're aspiring to do this job, like kind of sift through it for you, the goal of the schoolhouse is for you to graduate, not to, I mean, they're putting all the resources there for you to graduate, not to, you know, their mission is not to fail you. The mission is to find the very best and most qualified uh, people to do the job because, you know, if you're an instructor, you're probably, you or your friends are going to deploy with these guys later. So you want the best guys there. Uh, so there's going to be any, any shortcuts or, or any, uh, 
leeway for if, for people who are, aren't cut out for it. But the resources are there. Like they want you to graduate. They want to give you every possible uh, means to graduate. And um, you know, being physically prepared, being mentally prepared, is important. But understanding that uh, the only person really in the way of you not graduating is so, um, and not making a decision. I always tell guys make a make a pre decision, make a decision in advance. I'm here to graduate. I'm gonna I'm, my IT bands are gonna be blown out. I'm gonna get bronchitis. Every I'm gonna have I'm at some point during this process I'm going to have a legitimate reason to quit. And so decide in advance when that legitimate reason surfaces. What are you gonna do? How you respond to it? I'm gonna graduate to school. Like make the decision in advance because you will at some point want to quit and justify quitting. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of what I, I was bringing up with knowing why you want to be there um, yeah. and making that decision, that mentality of I'm going to graduate this course. And yeah. once you make that decision, I'm going to graduate this course and you have a why it's, you know, maybe the dream job, everybody has a different why of why they do things. Um, but understanding and knowing your personal reasons for wanting to graduate the course um, is huge. And I think coming, going through as a student, you'll think these instructors hate me. They're, they're not, uh, they're trying to make me fail this and that or whatever, but going through as an instructor, it's, it's actually the opposite. Uh, and you might even see that as a student, especially nowadays as the courses improved and become better and, uh, making recon Marines, um, as an instructor, I, if I saw a student struggling with a, you know, a breaststroke in the pool, um, maybe there's a group of them, there's five or six, there's enough stru instructors there, especially now that at least when I was there, I'd pull those students aside. They, they might be running 16, 30, 17 minute runs on land, but they're struggling with this breaststroke. They'll get pulled aside by an instructor and they'll get to work on it. Um, instructors are really there to help, uh, get guys to graduate. They want people to graduate. It's, it's the goal of the school. We need recon marines um but we you also have to meet the standard and and i mentioned that in the book as well just because you want it really bad doesn't mean you're going to make it um that's where a lot of that preparation comes in and understanding your weaknesses working on them if you if your weakness is swimming work on swimming if it's running if it's rucking all those things uh those are things you can work on so it, it really is up to you but the instructors are going to help um a lot help you along with those weaknesses as well while you're there but it is better to not have too many weaknesses before you arrive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah all right so you know finally let's uh break down the book uh what's uh how you have the book structure that's you know what's what do you want to share about the book and what you want to expect from reading it um, all right well i i give uh, a little bit of introduction of you know what recon is as uh, you know, some people join the Marine Corps might not even have ever heard of recon or anything. Uh, there's people from all kinds of different backgrounds. Um, so it's just a, a brief explanation of what recon is. A little bit of preparation. Um, there's a chapter on that pre-BRC, MART, RTAP, um, and what happens there. And then I kind of go through each phase of training, what, what to expect, how to prepare for it. Um, where students tend to fail, um, how you can maybe study and find, you know, other students to work with and study with, things like that. And then um, I go into physical tests, all the physical tests you'll be taking for airborne dive school, you know, the PFT, the CFT, just Marine Corps stuff that what is expected. Um, the basic gist of that is, hey, there's a long distance run followed usually by a bunch of body weight workouts like pull-ups, push-ups, crunches, sit-ups, those things like that, and um, little tips and stuff about how to get better at each and every one of those. And then I have a chapter on running specifically, swimming specifically, and hiking or ruck running specifically. Um, I'd say that the longest chapter, and for a good reason, is the swimming chapter, just because swimming um, is right up front. It's the first thing you're going to do at BRC. It's what most people are failing. Um, Usually the only students that excel or do really great at swimming and even they're struggling is uh, people that swim in high school or college, like on a water polo team or something like that. 
But uh, so, so when you say swimming, are you, is are you differentiating swimming and finning, or or yes. you mean swimming? Yes, yeah, swimming, like just camis, uh, utility, the uniform and boots, um, or not just. We're, we're talking breaststroke side, breaststroke side stroke, right? That's the options. Absolutely, uh, breaststroke side stroke. Those are time swims, and that'll that'll probably be the easiest thing to overcome. Is just hey, swim and lap, you know, there and backs as fast as you can, um, but also bottom samples, treading bricks, rifles, um, techniques for that. You know, there's different treading techniques like the egg beater and the frog kick and how to develop those uh, muscles and skills for, for the swimming portion. And by the, by the way, uh, for the young aspiring Rico Marine listening, when he says bottom samples, uh, DRC is not conducted at an eight foot pool. It's 16 foot pool. 16 and a half. 16 and a half and a half foot matters yeah, it does <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference uh and you uh, oh, go down 16 feet well we're not talking about going out we're to up down up down up down to the point to your intentional point to where you're hypoxic right that's probably one of your goals as instructors making them yeah you know, hypoxic. It, it, by the end by the time they're done with uh bottom sample there'll be 40 minutes of bottom samples um one every minute gathering bricks from the bottom and passing those here so at the time at the surface you're not catching your breath here you know, treading a brick and passing it to a buddy and then going back down to the bottom again. And so there's a, there's a sense of panic that gets induced, especially during that training event, which I explained in the book. Um, and it, it really just builds a, that strong mentality. It's like, that's, that's a moment where a lot of people are going to want to quit. Like I can't breathe. I'm tired. Um, this, this sucks because it does suck. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's just like, if you have that mentality, like you said earlier, I'm going to graduate, you're going to get through that event and it's going to end. It's, and then your, your day continues and you train again the next day. Um, yeah, I understand. Inside, insider tip. And I, I went instructor there. I was a rip instructor. I went be your instructor. So insider tip for everybody listening in this, they, they scared. They can't kill you. Oh. Everybody, these guys, the instructors do not want to kill you because they're going to be a lot of trouble if, if instructor student dies on them. So that's a good thing to always add in my mind. They're not going to let me die. No. I, that may let me pass out, <laughs> they may, but uh, they're going to resuscitate me and, and I'll be back in training. No problem. So uh, yeah, that's a good even thing. That. And, and the instructors, <laughs> I, I, I probably spent the most of my time at BRC at the pool. Um, I was a, a patrol phase instructor. I did stuff at the amphib phase and uh, a lot of pool time and instructors understand what a panicked face looks like. Someone who might be struggling, they're going to, they're going to, keep everything safe. And if you need to be pulled out of the pool, you're probably, you're going to get pulled out of the pool. They're, they're not going to let you drown. Um, they, we hardly ever let anyone black out. Some kids black out, but they're not even under the water before they're pulled out. Um, if yeah. that happens. So it's, it is a very safe environment. Um, there's so much. I had a, sh- a, sh- a shadow, I had a shadow back out at a, I was uh, in a quiz school and, uh, which, which was terrible. I, I thought, awesome. yeah. I thought McQuist school, the hard, the water portion was harder for me at McQuist school than BRC. I agree. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> when I went through McQuist, yeah, okay. I thought it was harder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I had a shadow of back out there, which I think they, they care there. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I, I think BRC has that reputation of being difficult. So we, they, we make it very safe. Um, especially in the pool. It, it, definitely don't take anything make anything more dangerous than it needs to be it's already hard and we yeah. understand that um it doesn't need to be you know dangerous dangerous exactly so it's 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 safe but it is a, a part where that mentality is going to be tested um and that's one to overcome so that's where I, I spent a lot of time discussing that in the book in the swimming chapter and then also as you mentioned with finning um the finning portion of the book is placed in within the amphibious phase chapter um, mm-hmm. and how to fin because there's that's just something different that no one does at least as far as I know before they join the military um, it shocked me I mean my, my uh I was always great we all grew up in southern Louisiana not Hawaii but our water is a lot different <laughs> but, oh, yeah. uh, but uh you got some clearer water than I had growing up but but uh, man I, I mean I was just super comfortable in the water and I'm like the water part, no problem. And I was just good, good swimming and uh, put fins on. And I'm like, and I was like, 
a piece of driftwood, man. I couldn't propel myself, my oh, yeah. hip flexures, my ankles. It, it took a while to get my body accustomed to venting. And I'm thankful for Rip because if it wasn't for Rip, I, I wouldn't have passed BRC because I wouldn't have made it 10 times. But oh, uh, yeah. the Rip really prepared me. But yeah, so put those fins on before you go down there. Yeah, Finn, I, I think I, I wrote in the book Kick Harder like probably two or three times because um, <laughs> that even for me, I grew up uh, snorkeling, spear fishing, all that stuff. That doesn't help much or at all with finning, uh, military style finning. Uh, it's just very different. Your muscles will get used to it. Uh, there's a lot of time spent in Mart and our tap finning uh, hours a day. Sometimes that will prepare students. And it, it does a pretty good job of preparing students for amphibious phase. By the time they get there, they're solid but you're going to have to push yourself um, and push past that discomfort in the hip flexors and ankles and things like that. For me, I I think our time was we left the beach with our rucks and all of our combat equipment, broke the surf, hit a buoy, one nautical mile, 2000 meters, came and hit the surf again. The time stopped. We had a 56 minute. uh, We had 56 minutes to do that. Is that still about the same? It's about the same. I think it's 60 minutes. Um, this, this new generation with their extra yeah, 60 minutes uh <laughs> dude, they let you uh they let you get past the surf once you're past the surf the start of the time but that that includes currents all that stuff um if it's a bad current one day yeah you get the littoral drift working against you and uh yeah, working against you uh i mentioned treadmill well. work you know ask the instructor where, which way is the current pushing if you can't see it uh, no experience in the ocean things like that it's stuff to look out for ask questions um instructors are there to help and you're letting a class letting a class decide which way the littoral drift is going and uh a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, uh, everything's set up for success um if you're pushing hard you'll make it you're gonna make the time it's just it's, it's a sprint it's not a it's not a paced event no it's kick as hard as you can for an hour it, probably less if you get most most students come in in the 50 low 50 minutes range um they have till 60 but most most of the time by the time they get there then the low 50s mid 50 range yeah uh, some are like at 30 something minutes which is insane to me i still can't yeah that, that, that's, that's, that's it <laughs> they caught a they caught a good uh current is what that happened oh yeah <laughs> no, but, those guys out there they're just beast man um you know you're doing it and you're not it's not an individual event it's a in a buddy team oh it's individual individual uh, Okay. Spinning is an individual event. Um, just there and back pushing a ruck. Uh, I know, I think it buds and maybe even the Raiders, I'm not hundred percent sure that they'll, they'll fin ruckless. So, at, yeah. so at you get there, you're, get there and pushing, have no gear. <laughs> you're pushing a ruck with, uh, with a pig egg in it, probably 35, 45 pounds pushing yeah. that, um, for an hour as fast as you can. Rubber rifle rubber rifle. Yeah. So it's, it's equipment. You got students will have a vest on with a knife, uh, fins, snorkel goggles, um, yeah. rubber rifle pack, all that. So that it's going to increase some drag. Uh, it's definitely a good hard yeah. effort for a long we, hour. We did, we were on our side. Uh, I, I knew you guys made that transition into snorkel cause I think that happened like around maybe 2000. We were, we were in our, our side, side stroke, uh, and, uh, no, no, uh, no snorkel. So we're side stroke and, um, and dragging our, our ruck. Okay. Back yeah. In, back in my day. And, uh, and then that, I think that was a good adjustment and also it's just a good, a good transition over to combat dive. You know, you face oh, down yeah. in the water. Absolutely. Um, I'm pretty sure at least when I went through and at amphib phase, you're still required to have your head and eyes out of the water, um, yeah. for, for the fins pushing the ruck. But it is a good transition because you have your elbows tight, holding your ruck, uh, looking forward, um, kicking as hard as you can. So, um, yeah, it's it's different. It's a hard effort. I think I failed my first fin at BRC, even with lots of practice, um, and then passed the second two. Um, it's it takes it takes a good amount of work to get through that, but it's just pushing. It's that it, everything when it comes down to it is that mentality. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to do what it takes and uh, yeah. you'll, you'll get through. Yep. All it takes is all you got. Exactly. Um, <laughs> what else? I mean, we, we talking a lot about the amphib phase because, you know, we know, we both know that's the one that gets people. Um, 
but I think another one that I, and I mean, for me, my peers going through the big one was always land nav. Land nav's a big, big factor. Still is a lot of guys feel land nav. Yes, um, and that's one of the things that uh, you, if you've made it to BRC, you've already passed land nav because now land nav is in the RTAP phase. Ah. So that's I like where that. I like that's that. Where those numbers kind of get going could because a lot of people fell land nav um to have a higher graduation rate at brc we're going to move land nav to rtap um so uh you get a lot of good classes the instructors are very good at teaching land nav out there um it, you get plenty of practice but that is a very difficult skill and it's a perishable one as well um i did land nav uh last weekend with the nrotc group here at c boulder and uh i I was shocked at how much worse I got at it. I still got all my points and everything. I yeah. did great, but um, it's it's a perishable skill. It's uh, something you definitely pay attention to. Don't fall asleep in that class. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, BRC, you have to, you ha I mean, right out the gate, you have to train and associate. You have to have the ability to train and associate in wrong. Like, oh, yes. You can't just, you can't just dead reckon. You can't just put a plot and stare at your compass and start walking. You have to be able to look at a map uh, and, and to, I mean, for me, I remember we had to take off running to make our oh, time. Yeah. 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 Uh, you're definitely not wasting time uh, moving quickly if you run, if you have to terrain association. Um, I don't know how many listeners are going to understand that, but like when you see a map and you want, look at your terrain features, you're gonna have to like see the 3d in your mind, kind right. of the, uh, what's, what's coming out of that map and what everything means, understanding that, um, Marines have a pretty good advantage because they get exposed to land navigation um, at boot camp and a little bit of ITV. But the corpsmen that go through probably don't have too much land navigation stuff. So they're learning from scratch usually. But um, those that pay attention and like really study and understand terrain features, how to use a compass, uh, they'll get through it. But it, it's, it's a learning skill. Um, I don't feel sorry for the Sarks because if they can't pass land now, they're not going to pass 18 Delta. Exactly. They, they got a lot of, they have a pretty difficult pipeline to get through for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, I, I'm so, I'm so thankful you wrote this book. Um, I get, you know, just my social media platform, I get tons of young kids that are writing me and asking me for advice and insights and, um, and the belt to just, you know, now instead of, yeah, ask, answering all the questions, I could just say, hey, grab this book, all it takes. You know, Staff Sergeant Nordy was there as an instructor. He knows what it takes in, a, in, a, in being a resource. So thank you for writing this. Um, anything else you want to add about the book before we wrap it up? Basically that, uh, I just, I, I wrote it for those guys that are out there seeking the questions and want the answers. And those, those people that really take the time to prepare for BRC, which is highly encouraged. It's a very difficult course for everyone. There's, you get, there's so much going on, uh, so much being tested that any advantage you can have attending that course is a huge bonus. And that's really what I, I did it for is uh, I, I wanted to make sure individuals that care about progressing in their life and doing a job, um, that there was a resource out there for them. And uh, that's that's all I wanted to do is if it helps you know, if you guys graduate, then I did my job. Well, man, it's, it's on Amazon. So grab it on Amazon. If you're, if, if you want to go to BRC and you're not willing to spend, uh, you know, whatever, what's it? 10 bucks or 10 bucks on ebook. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're not willing to spend 10 bucks or what's the hard copy? Uh, 25, I think right 25 now. bucks. You're not willing to spend, you know, a t-shirt a hundred bucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're not willing to spend that on preparing for the course, then you're probably not going to graduate. Uh, I'll just be straight up with you. I mean, it's, you have to be prepared. And uh, if you have this kind of resource out there and you don't, and you don't have the mindset of uh, doing your research and preparing, you know, you probably don't even deserve to, to graduate. So uh, prepare yourself. This is a great resource. Um, you're in a, you're in a MESET program. Those who don't know what it is. You're transitioning from enlisted to officer and you got like the, one of the best gigs in the military. You're getting paid full-time job paid to go to college right now in Colorado, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, super happy for you. That's, that's amazing. And, uh, and uh, look forward to just, you know, stay in touch with you and following up and seeing how your career is going and, 
and uh, man, I hope, hope to see you as a, as a recon officer one day. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll make sure we push the book out and uh, guys uh, follow, follow Travis on, on social media and uh, wish him, wish him well. And as a uh, transition to be an officer, even to go on the dark side. <laughs> yes. I hear all the time. I know. And, yeah. uh, and even if you're not, if you, if you're not aspiring to be recon Marine, still get this book. Cause it's just super cool read and uh, great information. Uh, really inside look and uh, on the, the training to become what I believe one of the best special operations jobs in the military, being a reconnaissance Marine, all it takes, all you got. Uh, thanks so much for listening. God bless.